Cameron Kahn. I'm an infectious disease physician and scientist based at St. Michael's Hospital. Uh, I'm an associate professor with the Department of Medicine at the University of Toronto. I'm a clinician scientist, which means I spend part of my time seeing patients. Uh, in, in this case, I work specifically in the area of infectious diseases. And I'm a scientist, and my interests are in understanding how the world's population travels and what that means in terms of um, its impact to public health and, and global health security. So the, the idea started um, shortly after the SARS epidemic. So I was living in New York City. Uh, I was doing my infectious disease fellowship training, came back to Toronto. I'm originally from Canada. And shortly after I arrived, SARS landed on our doorstep. So this was in 2003. So that outbreak, I would say, really left an impression on me because it was very clear that the way that this disease was moving was clearly along the pathways and the corridors of international travel. And so it really um, kind of dawned on me that perhaps we should be better understanding the, the global airline transportation network itself, understanding how we interact, how we move as a global community, and then leveraging that knowledge to anticipate how diseases would spread and perhaps um, even prepare for infectious disease events before they occur by, again, anticipating um, where they might arise and how they may move. Well, it's interesting. We've had a lot of interest from a number of different groups, including ones that I had never really anticipated. First and foremost, you know, I work in the area of health, so we've seen a lot of interest from different health organizations around the world, the Government of Canada, the United States, the European Union, the World Health Organization, we were working with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and so on. Um, but beyond the area of health, we've also found a significant amount of interest from departments of defense, uh, biodefense and biosecurity uh, organizations, and even industry itself, so insurance companies, um, the airlines themselves. So there's actually been a lot of interest not only from the public sector in terms of governments that are dealing with infectious disease threats, but defense departments and, and agencies, and then also various sectors of industry um, as well. So there's been, there's been quite a broad interest across those, those three areas. I think, you know, when we look back to the H1N1 pandemic, we had really been developing a system that could say, where are people moving in the world and when? Um, what we didn't know for sure is, would that actually accurately predict how infectious diseases of people would also move around the world? When H1N1 came on the scene, we were able to actually analyze the movements quickly of roughly 2.4 million people leaving Mexico at the time of the H1N1 outbreak and predicted with over 90% accuracy where the disease would go and where it wouldn't go during that initial wave front. So we had sort of some proof of, of principle there that was demonstrated. I think we're at a stage right now where we've had our successes in the academic environment. We have an idea. We've been able to develop that idea the technology that would enable us to make this information accessible to a broader array of groups doesn't exist today. We are working on technology development, but in an academic environment there are constraints uh, around what we can do. What we're being asked for now by different governments and industries is to be more of a service provider. And what we are is a traditional researcher. And to get across that bridge from a traditional researcher in academia to creating a technology that is broadly accessible to different groups around the world and can generate real-time actionable intelligence is the next step and the biggest challenge I think for us. Not at all. I would say um, I'm a pragmatist by heart um, and ultimately I like to be involved in things where I can see a tangible real-world impact at the end of the day. Um, I think I reached a certain point where I realized I could continue to write manuscripts and papers in academia and get traditional academic currency for doing that, but the reach of this work and the ability for it to produce a public good was limited. Um, and so ultimately my thinking is that 
the way to move in the future is some sort of public-private venture or some kind of commercialization venture that allows this technology to sustain itself and to, to grow and enhance over time to make the world ultimately a, a safer place from the threat of infectious diseases.